Welcome everyone to the third Thursday meetup of the West Orlando WordPress meetup group. I'm Rob Watson, a co-organizer and host. West Orlando WordPress is an official WordPress meetup group affiliated with the WordPress Orlando and WordCamp US meetup groups. According to Built With, Shopify and WooCommerce combined represent 46% of e-commerce platform use. The two have very different origins, one being proprietary and cloud-based, while the other is free and open source. Shopify and WooCommerce share much in common despite their different formats, and each has pros and cons when compared to the other. Neither is perfectly performant nor bug-free. They both offer excellent turnkey integrations with popular services for the online storefronts that they power, such as payments, shipping, social feeds, and taxes. It's not uncommon to use both or to pair a Shopify subdomain with a WordPress primary domain. WooCommerce has been innovating closer to Shopify with its newer Woo Express service that maintains the open source core. Sean Conklin will discuss what people like and dislike about each platform, answer questions, and share tips and tricks for understanding and getting the most out of these competing technologies. Sean Conklin has been a full stack PHP web developer since 2002. He has specialized in WordPress powered sites since 2011 and WooCommerce powered shops since early 2017, adding Shopify in 2023. Sean helps his clients efficiently build and customize their, customize their storefronts, delegate with proper user roles, and gain confidence and stability through his maintenance and support services. At this point, I'd like to invite everyone to mute their microphones for the presentation. Sean, thank you for being our presenter this evening. The time is now yours. All right. Well, good to meet everybody. And thank you for that wonderful introduction, Rob and uh, Brian, for uh, inviting me to speak here. Uh, glad to meet this group. And hopefully you guys like this topic and uh, we'll have a fun Q&A session uh, coming up here. But uh, this topic is is dear to my heart because uh, my background is more in WooCommerce, but I expanded into Shopify last year, uh, passed their certification uh, exams and, um, you know, really take it seriously. One of my bigger clients uses it quite a bit. I wouldn't say it's been a big driver of business for me. Uh, Woo really is that for me. Um, but Shopify is very important and, and has an important place. And I, I think as we look to the future, both of these platforms are going to continue to to grow and do well in their own in their own ways. Uh, and so we'll talk about some of those differences to hopefully help you with your projects and picking the right platform or serving both uh, or having hybrid setups where you can kind of use one to do one thing, another to do another or or mix sites. Um, so I wanted to start off with a story. I'm going to get my slides going here so you guys can have a peek at that. Um, quick story here. I was at a pool party, swimming pool party. Oh, this was about two and a half years ago up in the Hollywood Hills, underneath the Hollywood sign, by the way. <laughs> the person who hosted had quite the quite the location. Um, and at this party, I was talking to somebody about WordPress. Uh, this guy is also a web developer. And um, while we were talking, somebody came over and interrupted and said, it was talking to this other person I, I was speaking to and said, you know, uh, somebody I know needs a website. Can you do it for him? And uh, his response after we had just, you know, talked about WordPress for the last five minutes, uh, his response was, oh, yeah, um, yeah, okay, that's a, a lawyer's website. Yeah, easy. Just go to Squarespace, uh, you know, sign up, put in a credit card, maybe um, upload your logo, pick some colors. And, you know, if you want me to do it, it's like 300 bucks, you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of threw me because, uh, well, especially at the time I was, I was more, you know, oh, it has to be WordPress uh, oriented. Um, and after we had just talked about WordPress for a while, it was kind of surprising to hear his go-to solution be something very non-WordPress. Um, but so I thought about that and, you know, it does make sense that there's a variety of platforms out there, a lot of popular ones, and, you know, they each have their market, they each have their their purposes and, uh, and, and sort of where, the, where they shine and WordPress doesn't necessarily shine for everybody. I don't think it really needs to. Um, but we, especially those of us in the WordPress ecosystem heavily embedded in it, you know, we, we have to know that it's really not all about WordPress out there. Um, it may be for 
those of us who do development, who get really deep in it, who've been with it for a long time, uh, who you know take it to new heights, so to speak. But there's a lot more out there. And uh, my business, I uh, got into WooCon. WordPress goes back, oh, wow, probably 2009. Um, but WooCommerce, I really go back to early 2017. At, I worked in a marketing company where we were releasing a lot of sites in Woo. And uh, I ended up launching my business a year later, just in Woo. <laughs> so it's been really an adventure. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about some of the things I've done in Woo as we as we get ahead here. But um, it's a very powerful platform. It It does require maintenance and support for the store owners that are not as deeply technical or that need a lot of customization. Uh, some development, even though it has all these pre-built modules, there's there's always the development side of it. Same with Shopify, but there's a difference there. They have more on the pre-built end. We'll 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 get into some of those nuances. But um, so for me, Shopify came about because I had lost a couple of clients to it, and then you know this pool party incident. I'm starting to think, well, okay, maybe. <laughs> and then the real thing that did it for me. I'll tell you one more story here that. Uh, um, Maybe I shouldn't tell the story, but I'm going to anyway. Um, the Woo Experts program, I've been trying to get into this thing uh, since, oh uh, yeah, 2018 was when I first tried to get in. Um, and they had it closed down for a while. There were It pre-existed to that. They, they sort of had it on pause to new, uh, new people signing up. Uh, and then they reopened it sometime around 2020. So, you know, try applied, didn't hear anything back, applied the next year, got a rejection, applied again, another rejection. And finally, I talked to somebody and they said, look, you're not a real agency. You're just a one man show. Um, you know, we only work with agencies. And then so last year I was presenting at Woo Sesh, a virtual conference, and the CEO of Woo presented and said, Hey, you know, we're opening up the experts program. We want all experts, no matter where they are, no matter how big their their organization is, you know, et cetera. And, and I, so I was like, I, you know, my eyes opened. Wait, wait a minute. You guys have been rejecting me all this time, you know, just because I work alone. Um, and uh, so I, I we had a Slack channel, right, which I was on because I was one of the presenters. So I slacked the guy, you know. I don't even know the CEO's name at this point. Uh, he, he told me, um, he said, well, uh, it's coming up. We're, we're changing the program. I've heard this before, right? You know, it, what he had presented on saying that it's opening, that it's open. What what he really meant was it's opening. Well, here we are seven months later and, you know, I, I still haven't heard anything. So the point I'm trying to make here with this story is that Shopify excels more when it comes to the affiliate system, the uh, official app store, managing vendors, um, again, not that all their vendors are perfect. None of these, you know, none of these things exist in a vacuum. They all have a lot of, you know, a lot of stuff coming in from third parties. Uh, but Shopify just seems to do a better job when it comes to managing the business end of things. Um, whereas Woo community software, you know, it's a big community. There's a lot of different things going on. You have, uh, I, I like to call it class A, B, and C plugins. You have your official Woo vetted plugins from WooCommerce.com, now Woo.com. You've got your WordPress.org community vetted open source plugins. And then you have your third party, usually called premium, where you download the plugin from a third party system. Um, so different, you know, sources and, uh, you know, different sort of meanings behind that. Whereas with Shopify, it's more unified app store and they have a bit more control there. So quality in Shopify can tend to be a bit better, but depth in WooCommerce can tend to be better in terms of what you can uh, build and certainly the block editor. I'm a big fan on that. I hope in the Q&A we could talk about blocks. Let me move on to the next slide here. So both of these systems are great in their own ways, right? I, before we we go dumping on them, like I probably already started here with that Woo Experts program, <laughs> kind of a joke. I, uh, by the way, I don't know the CEO's name because to me, he's nothing but a big liar. Okay, so um, they're both great despite some of these problems. Shopify for the proprietary side, in the cloud, software as a service. WooCommerce for open source, the community background, being able to pop the hood, get in, do whatever you need to do, access the database directly, uh, change the hosting environment, change things on it. 
and they're providing a product shop cart checkout uh, 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 self-service account portals and both of these systems you know they're shifting woo is innovating more in blocks shopify is replacing some of its systems they just uh, 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 released shopify subscriptions last month um, previous to that to do subscriptions you needed a third-party app um, beyond that uh, they have a whole new customer account portal and you know woocommerce similar thing there's the new blocks interfaces uh, compared to the traditional templates that come embedded into Woo that you could override with uh, with hooks or with uh, child theme template overrides. Now, you know, Blocks is a whole new uh, paradigm for WooCommerce and for WordPress in general. Um, and so Shopify, you know, they went from online store 1.0 to 2.0. You had to basically change out your theme. This was a few years back, but a lot of stores are still catching up to this day. Um, you know, all, all these have their shifting technologies, but they cover a huge portion of the site, you know, your, your shop pages, your product pages, your cart checkout customer accounts for an e-commerce site. That's mostly what it is. You may have a blog, FAQs, a few other things, but you know, that mostly is the site. Um, and then for the admin site, order management app or plugin management and updates. And they're also both offering themes and, and rich content editing. Uh, that, that's a bit where we talked about the WordPress block editor. I like to call it three-dimensional because the WordPress block editor, you could set up a block and then put blocks in it and blocks in that. And you could sort of stack your way to, you know, design whatever you want. Uh, Shopify is more of that two-dimensional. Um, you know, you have a list view, you have a bunch of, of sections you could add, uh, whatever your theme approves. There is a difference with themes. Shopify themes have a great amount of power in that platform. Uh, whereas Woo themes, you have a bit more flexibility with overriding files or programmatic hooks or, um, you know, uh, just block editing in general. Um, when then Shopify, the theme tends to control those those items more. So when you add a section in Shopify, it's got its settings. That's it. And unless you want to go hack your theme or build a custom theme, which I don't recommend in Shopify, uh, you know that the theme is structuring a lot of that. But they, but both platforms are offering rich content editing. So you still, you still get in Shopify the drag and drop widget uh, visual editing. It's just more two dimensional, let's say, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. I was in a, a discussion at uh, oh, which group was that? Joe Simpson's group in uh, Santa Clarita. I was talking with a gentleman named Eagle, and he was recommending a a third party page builder, not WordPress blocks. And so of course that starts a little uh, discussion and debate. And, you know, he, he says, look, bottom line, uh, the thing he was recommending called uh, Bricks is just easier. Uh, you don't have to do as much stacking, you know, it, it's simpler. And uh, that means something to a lot of people. So I'm not saying Shopify is bad if I say it's more two-dimensional. That may make it easier, but not quite as customizable. So there's there's a little nuance there. But they're both offering the rich editing. So that comes with both. And picking your theme and... Uh, you know, being able to edit templates. Uh, Cost-wise, uh, the enterprise grade, you know, WordPress VIP versus Shopify Plus, same cost, 2000 a month starting. Okay, so they do have a lot in common in terms of what they're offering. It's just how they go about it that's different. Uh, so Shopify, <laughs> because it is more all-in-one and turnkey. All right, this would be a major benefit to Shopify. You don't have to go find your hosting. Um, you could use one of their official themes. They have 12 of them. They all have the same code base, different designs. It's their their own official theme set. Um, you won't need as many apps in Shopify because it has more built-in uh, e-commerce specific settings and features, their own proprietary add-ons. Uh, for example, their payments platform, uh, point of sale integration, uh, markets, if you want to have, uh, uh, you know, geographic targeting. Um, if you upgrade to plus, then you have more wholesale uh, B2B type uh, segmentation multi-site. So yeah, there's, uh, there's a lot to any of these, but with Shopify, there's more baked into the core platform and they charge for that. <laughs> so there is a drawback to it as well. Um, but as I mentioned earlier, they seem to have a superior uh, affiliate and vendor management approach, more uh, contractual, more. Um, it seems vendors take Shopify uh, more seriously. That's uh, 
for example, just last week, I was talking with support at uh, Judge Me, a product review app. And I was like, well, you know, this client has Shopify and Woo, the particular site. I can't find the setting for is Woo. You guys just sent a blog post out about this new setting. We want it. Where is it? And they said, oh, yeah, that that's just for Shopify. It's not for Woo yet. Maybe we'll get to that someday, you know. Uh, yeah, and, and that's not the first time I've heard that line, okay? It, it, I've heard it from quite a few vendors where they're really putting Shopify first, Woo second, which is unfortunate. Um, but I can still do more in Woo code-wise to kind of work around the issue, but why are we the second-class citizen? You know, that that's all I could say is they, they got to manage their um, vendors better. Plain and simple. And then, you know, we go to that Woo Experts example. I think I'm a Woo expert. I've <laughs> been doing it full time since 2017, but not according to to them, I guess. So again, I just think they suck at vendor management. Sorry. <laughs> I'm just being honest here. Um, oops. Okay. So, uh, you know, the idea of keeping store owners safer by having more in the core system, you can put up those guardrails and, and keep people from, you know, what vendors might do, the silos they might create, some of the ways that they might not be giving back to the core system, which uh, whether it's open source or proprietary, <laughs> open source, you really need to give back to the core system. You need to be engineering around, you know, the core base. And at, when they come up with things like blocks, supporting them, like the checkout block in Woo that took forever. And to this day, a lot of plugins still don't support it. It's been out for four years already. Became the default almost a year ago. Guess what? Still a lot of plugins don't support it. So with Shopify, when they come up with their new online store 2.0, they don't turn off your OS 1.0 theme. You could still run it, but a whole slew of features you just don't get. You need to upgrade your theme. And if you're delaying it, you know, a lot of Shopify sites do. 99% of the Shopify sites I see run outdated themes. They have a major problem in that that they're not admitting to yet. Um, you, you really, you have to do that work if you want to have all the features. And we're talking about more than features. We're talking about, you know, security. We're talking about uh, accessibility. We're talking about all these quality factors, you know, um, that matter to all of us. So... That covers that one. Okay. WooCommerce benefit is you own it. You can open the hood. You could do whatever you need to do in that. You have the license for that software. You can decide you have a bit more division as to who your vendors are. Um, hosting, for example. Uh, one of my clients uh, recently, I, I, we've moved her hosts quite a bit. She was on, uh, uh, let me see, she was on, what was she on? She was on our previous developer's host originally. We moved her to her own WP Engine server and she liked it, but it just wasn't fast enough and it was costing a lot. So we moved her to um, Cloudways, definitely faster, a lot cheaper. Um, she's happy with that. But then I found, well, hey, you know, with spin up WP now, we can, uh, for 60 bucks a month, we can get you a DigitalOcean server or Akamai or Volter. Uh, with dedicated CPU. Now you're really talking speed when we talk dedicated CPU. We can get you the server for a nominal price and then pay spin up WP 12 bucks a month to manage the control panel. <laughs> now you're even faster and even cheaper. You know, so the tech innovations you could take more advantage of when you could slice things up a bit more. Another example I tossed in here is you can use Stripe directly. I really like uh, having my own Stripe account and being able to use, you know, the official Stripe plugin or a third party or my own code, which I do have a Stripe plugin in the marketplace that, um, you know, allows me to interface and I can log into the Stripe dashboard and do all the Stripe stuff if I need to do. Um, with Woo, you could do it. They offer Woo Payments, which is their version of Stripe, which if you use Woo Payments, you don't have direct Stripe access. It's through Woo Payments. Um but it's a little more turnkey, so they like that. Shopify payments, a little more restrictive. That's their version of Stripe. And it is it is there. You have to use Shopify payments to get the best rates. If you use any third-party payment suite, they tack on a surcharge. And it's also not compatible with a lot of their proprietary add-ons like POS and Markets Pro. So you definitely, in Shopify, really should use Shopify payments um, but also you can't use Stripe directly. 
Um, they don't have any apps that allow that. I believe it's against the terms. You could build a custom app in Shopify just installed in your store, um, but I, I think you would be violating their terms if you did a Stripe app. Uh, it's working around their system. So that is, you know, an example of one of the freedoms I take away. Another one is user switching in WordPress. I could install user switching. I could uh, see exactly what uh, my client's customers see. I can switch to any one of them. And, uh, oh, here's how you go renew your subscription or change your card or whatever. And Shopify, they tell you, oh, well, just ma make a pretend customer account for yourself and uh, pay for your own pretend ex subscription. <laughs> Do it all yourself. You got to be on plus if you want to be able to log in as customers. So they they get you on some of those things. You know, again, um, they have their reasons for it. So it, it is what it is. But some of these little freedom areas that you find uh, and, you know, as a business, you will find it at some point. WooCommerce can excel at that. So you can keep costs lower through those vendor choices, uh, WordPress standards, if you really appreciate those, uh, which again is now, we're gonna talk more about blocks later, I know it, um, <laughs> is 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 kind of more along those lines. Um, oops, here I am messing with my mouse here. And then, oh, modify checkout, that's the other one. You have to be on Shopify Plus to modify checkout. Uh, whereas in Woo, you could modify checkout, you know, with, with any plugin you want. Um, uh, to be clear, you can, uh, in Shopify's uh, theme customizer, you could choose, you know, background color, header. Uh, there are some settings for checkout that you have. You can enable certain payment gateways. And to change the order, you typically shut them all off and then turn them on in the order that you want them to appear at the bottom first. I think that's how it worked. And keep turn. See, you have a, a couple things you could do to checkout, but you can't really modify much of checkout other than that, unless you're on plus. Both of these systems have problems, as I've alluded. You do have a lot of software updates in both. Um, in, in WordPress, there's more worry about if I click the update, is something going to break? Uh, that is going to depend on, on the quality of plugins you're using, the quality of theme, and how up-to-date it is. The chances of an incremental update breaking things is very, very low unless that incremental update is a major update. And you could typically tell by the version number. Is this 2.0? That's probably going to break things. Is it 2.0.1? Feel a little better. 2.0.2? Okay, we're good. Just put that one in there, right? Um, with uh, Shopify, the apps update behind the scenes, but then you have to go reconnect them a lot. So there, there is still some maintenance there to have to do. A lot of times reconnecting them means I need my client's account to log into their whatever to connect it. <laughs> so that could be a big pain as well. I mentioned the theme updates, which are often ignored in Shopify. That's that's a big deal too. We all know what theme updates get us in, in WordPress. Shopify, that's even more the case because the theme has more, uh, they're, they're bigger. They have more files in them. They have hundreds of files you know, a lot more templates and template parts and things like that that come with a, a Shopify theme. Both of these systems require a lot of setup, you know, whether it's importing products, figuring out your shipping tiers, getting taxes straightened out, variable products, uh, subscriptions, uh, the list just goes on. There's, you know, any e-commerce site, whatever you think it's going to take to put it together, multiply by several factors, okay? Um, the vendor silo problem, um, app, apps in Shopify are silos. They they have their own uh, control panels that are not really tightly integrated to the core system. There is app embeds that they came up with in, uh, in Online Store 2.0, which is very nice. Um, that's like gives you a little control panel where you can turn the app on for your entire theme so you don't have to go hack your themes code or or add a custom liquid section to to get an app to work in your theme. You can just turn a little thing on and um, and that works. But uh, apart from that feature, apps are still very siloed within within Shopify, uh, just as we've seen within WordPress and WooCommerce, where if I'm using a class A WooCommerce plugin, it's going to add its little, it's little, uh, you know, additional settings where they should go, you know, fitting within the core system very nicely. Whereas a lot of these um, third-party uh, plugins will create their own main level admin menu. And when you click that, it looks nothing like anything else in your admin. It's just, and then it tries to sell you stuff, you know, and um, I just, I call that silo. I call it dumb code, you know, plugins that, that employ their own licensing. You're wasting a bunch of, 
processing resources just for some of these plugins to activate themselves. Some of these plugins need another plugin to activate <laughs> its sibling plugins. Uh, it, it's, it becomes madness, you know? So this problem exists in either system. Uh, you know, don't pretend that in Shopify that problem goes away. I'll tell you, there's Shopify apps I've installed where the app is basically a placeholder. You turn the app on, it gives you a little admin icon, you click it, and it opens the dashboard of that service in the window. And then you think it's connecting, it doesn't connect anything. The dashboard just tells you, copy, paste this code, go click and customize your theme and, and edit it there, or, or click a theme code editor and add a section. Because when you edit your theme's code, if you add a section in Shopify, it will migrate that when you update your theme. But if you edit your uh, theme.liquid file, Shopify cannot update your theme. They will they will say, you must merge your code manually <laughs> and people just get stuck and, and don't fix it. So, okay, you know, these problems are in both systems. You know, let's be realistic about that. And then settings all over the place. Yes, both of them. You've got one control panel after another. But again, the more of the core system you're using, the more familiar you are. If I'm in Woo, a classic theme, okay, go to the customizer. If I'm in Woo block theme, go to the site editor, right? Woo itself has its own control panel, uh, right? So I, I kind of know where these settings should be. They are all over the place, but at least it makes sense where they are. Um, and then Shopify, you've got several places too. It makes sense when you get into that system. The more you, the more you know about it, the more it'll, it'll add up. Okay, so lastly, before we get into Q&A here, because uh, we're, we're kind of getting somewhat close to time. Uh, I wanted to talk about, you know, strategically, when would I recommend Shopify versus Woo? Uh, and what are kind of some things to think about here? I, I've already put a lot out there from my experience, but I would generalize it as, you know, Shopify is a better fit for more standardized stores. Um, certainly if it's a shorter term commitment, where you just need to spin something up, get it going. You're not sure if it's really going to go to the next level. It, it seems to me it's a lower investment. You're, you're paying more transactionally potentially. Um, but, and, and certainly another one of those restrictions is number of admins uh, with Woo and WordPress, unlimited admins with Shopify. It depends on your plan. You may have three admins, you may have five, you know, it it's what you sign up for. So it's more restrictive, but, it can also help you just kind of jump spring to, to get launched. Um, and then Shopify Plus on the wholesale side, it basically is an ERP. It's more than an e-commerce website at that point. So if you're coming from Salesforce or NetSuite, you're more familiar with those more expensive ERP tools, Shopify Plus could be a great fit because it's already, it's cheaper than what those are, but it's also your websites as well. And I use websites plural because that has some multi-site capabilities to it. And then uh, over on the right, Woo side, certainly for techies, power users who want all that control. Longer term operations, you know, open source is long term. I mean, think of Linux. This project has been going steady for a very long time, and it certainly will continue to. Um, highly customized shops where you have to put in a lot of uh, investment into really, you know, making that site function the way you want it to, the unique way you want to own it. So the ownership kind of fits in there. And then over here on the lower left, larger entities tend to mix and match. They're more multi-channel where you're going to have uh, probably a main site, either custom coded or in WordPress. And then shop is typically on a subdomain. If you look at Shopify sites on built with, you list them out. Most of them are shop dot store dot, you know, stuff like that. They're subdomains. So, uh, Shopify does have the ability to do pages and posts, but it's really not so great at those. WordPress is much deeper in the blogging area as far as what it could do and what's just built into core. Um, but Shopify does have those. So again, if it's smaller, shorter term, or if it's a subsite, that may be totally fine. But if you're building a, a very rich content site that has products and posts, and one of my uh, clients, Best Chinese Medicines, she has um, a blog section, a herbal dictionary, product categories by uh, by organ, product categories by uh, ailment, all kinds of things, right? So she really likes the WordPress and Woo approach because we could really go deep in all those areas. Um, 
So for larger entities, you know, you could just divide it up. Think of any company with departments. This department runs this, that department runs that, you know. Um, and then we we talked about some multi-site options. I, I, those could be across any platforms, but Shopify Plus is within there. WordPress has multi-site, so there's those. Over on the lower right, um, WooCommerce experience can be done in a, in a Shopify way using this newer Woo Express uh, that was introduced um, in, in the introduction today, where hosting and plugins are bundled with the software. You still own it. It's still open source, but you're paying Woo directly, Woo Express, for you know more of the general stuff that you may need, like uh, subscriptions probably being a big one. Um, and then there is WordPress VIP hosting. We talked about around that $2,000 a month starting point where, uh, and I've used it before, they're very, um, uh, uh, you know, restrictive about what plugins and themes and stuff you can use. And uh, they, they use GitHub. So when I want to deploy a plugin update, they actually built a UI for it too. But when I want to deploy a plugin update, I do stuff through Git mostly. And, and it's, um, you know, it takes a little getting used to, but they're, you know, that's very enterprisey. Um, and then also you have the 2020 themes uh, for block uh, theming, 2022, 23, and 24. So using those default themes, um, it's still, you know, blocks can be more of a blank canvas anyway, but using those kind of adds a little style to it. It adds more official support, long-term stability. Even the 2010 theme is still supported to this day. So those are some pretty reliable ways to go to have a, um, a, a wooify experience if we want to bring these names together here. So hopefully that makes sense. And uh, I'd love to answer questions you have and kind of see where this goes. So we'll turn this back over and I will stop sharing now. Thank you so much. That's that's an amazing presentation. Lots of dense material that we'll have a lot of uh, questions on, I'm sure.